Hey, welcome back to Ontario Cryptids. Today we have two stories coming your way. So grab yourself a drink and sit back and relax. All right, our first story takes place on October 14th 2003 near a small town called Searchmont, Ontario. Before I start, let me give you my background. I'm 50 years old. I have two kids and two grandkids. I've been married for over 29 years and I have been a Toronto police officer for over 28 years. I started shooting when I was seven years old, started hunting woodchucks and rabbits when I was nine or 10 years old. I did a lot of fishing, canoeing, boating, camping, and hiking when I was a kid. I started hunting deer and bear when I was about 14 or 15, and I have ever since. And started hunting moose about 14 years ago. My parents were Salvation Army officers and were transferred all over Canada. I have done all of the above all over Canada during my younger years and continue now in Ontario where I permanently reside in Ajax, which is just 10 minutes east of Toronto. For the last 10 years, I have hunted moose about 30 miles northeast of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, near a small town called Searchmont near Northland Lake. I thought I was losing my marbles, and that thought was reinforced when I told my brother-in-law, my hunting partner, the story. I later told my wife over the phone and she was intrigued by my story. She apparently told a co-worker who found your site on the internet. When I called her to tell her I was on my way home, she told me of your site and that there were several sightings in Ontario. That's when I realized that maybe I wasn't just seeing things or losing my head. When I got home, I checked out your site and figure you're the only people I can tell my story to that won't think I'm completely nuts. Anyhow, to my story, sorry, it's a long one, but it doesn't make sense if I don't tell it all. My brother-in-law and I went hunting moose just northeast of Sault Ste. Marie. On Tuesday the 14th, October 2003, I went up an old trail to where I came to a dead end. I got stuck on my ATV in the mud, but managed to get out and turn around. I went partway down the trail to where I found a clearing and parked on the west side where I could see about 200 yards north and south. I stopped there about 7.45 a.m. I put out some moose cow in heat urine scent on the surrounding trees, and a few minutes later did a moose cow call on my horn. I looked at my watch, which said it was 8.05 a.m. At about 8.15 a.m., it started to rain. I didn't want to get my gun wet, so I put it back in the gun boot on my ATV. The rain helps hide my scent, but at the same time, it makes it noisy in the bush, with the water hitting the ground, leaves, trees, etc. At 8.30 a.m., I started hearing footsteps and snapping twigs coming from the northeast of my position. The noise of the rain disguised the footsteps until it was very close to me, and because of this, I wasn't ready. My gun was still in the boot. All of a sudden, I heard the distinctive sound of a bull moose raking his rack on the brush very close. I looked to my left and I saw a huge bull raking his rack about 70 yards from me. I reached back and pulled my gun from the boot, but dropped the boot cover on top of my ATV, which made a banging noise. When I turned back to where the moose was, it took off back into the dense brush. I thought this was a bit strange because I've seen several moose in the past that just stood there. They don't seem to be afraid of anything and just stand there. I've had them stand in front of me for several minutes before walking off into the brush in the past and couldn't understand why this one took off so fast. 
I stayed still for about an hour hoping it would come back. During that time, I called on my horn and I heard him rake his rack on a bush twice and grunt at me as he headed off in a southerly di direction through the bush. It turns out there was a gully just out of my line of sight that he used to walk around me and disappear. I was later able to raise my brother-in-law on the radio who showed up and went to where I had seen the moose. He checked the bush and found fresh tracks which showed the moose had gone around me in the gully which was just out of my line of vision. He suggested that I sit near where the moose had come out and see if it might come back. I then crossed the clearing and sat on my ATV about five yards from where I saw the moose and sat facing east. Again, I sprayed some moose cow in heat urine scent on the trees around me and I did a few calls on my horn. By this time, it was around 12.30 p.m. I had decided that I would sit there for the rest of the day hoping to see the bull cow come back. While there, I ate my lunch. I got off the ATV a few times to stretch my legs, had a few cigarettes and even had a little snooze. During this time, my back was to the gully that the bull had used to walk around me. At about 1.30 p.m., I started hearing heavy thumps behind me every now and then. Every time I heard one, I would turn around, but there was nothing there. I should have mentioned that it was still raining. The sounds of the rain hitting the ground or the leaves was quite loud, but these thumps were much louder. They sounded like a stone or something heavy hitting the ground, but every time I turned around, I saw nothing. At about 5.25 p.m., I got off my ATV to stretch my legs and have a smoke. I put my gun on the front bag of the ATV to make sure I had it within reach and stood in front of the ATV facing the gully, which was to my rear. While I was having my smoke, I started hearing the distinctive sound of footsteps coming from the gully snapping branches and leaves crunching. I kept my eyes on the gully while I reached for my rifle. I thought the bull was coming back. When I looked into the gully about 40 yards straight in front of me, I saw what I thought was a man walking towards me. He was stooped over and looked like he was having trouble walking in the bush. He grabbed a tree and swung himself around and ducked or dove down behind some thick brush. The total time of this took three to five seconds and he disappeared. He looked to me as if he was dressed in all black with a black toque or balaclava on his head. The reason I thought he was wearing a toque was that his head seemed to be long at the back like a man wearing a toque. It looked like it was wearing a jacket and the front of the jacket was open halfway and I could see a different color of lining showing around the neck area. It looked like it was light gray or almost blue on the chest area in the shape of a V. I couldn't really say how tall it was because his legs were behind thick brush and I could only see about mid thigh. But I would have guessed at the time that he was anywhere from 5 foot 8 to 6 foot tall. But he was about 40 yards away and it's hard to judge height or size in the bush when you're not sure of the distance. His arms seemed to be too long for a man, but he was extremely muscular, like a bodybuilder with the typical V-shaped build. There was definitely no fat on him at all. I could see the different muscle groups on his upper body and arms bulging out and I could see it had a washboard stomach. When he grabbed the tree, I saw that he had hands, not paws. He swung around the tree and dove for cover as if trying to hide from me. As I said earlier, it was a dull day and it was raining and he looked wet. He was covered with black or dark brown hair and it looked like the hair was stuck to him very closely because he was wet. What also gave me the bodybuilder impression was that he seemed to have no neck or he had so much muscles on his shoulders that it gave that impression. On top of all of this, his shoulders were extremely broad. 
There was a line of dense brush leading off to my left from where it dove into which carried on for about 30 to 40 yards. About 10 to 15 seconds after it went behind this brush, I heard a hoarse rasping cough followed by a long, hoarse, sad sounding howl. It sounded like a wolf howl, but much deeper than a wolf I've ever heard. The sound came from about 20 yards from where I first saw it dive for cover. When I first saw it, I thought it was a man maybe lost in the bush, but my first thought was, why isn't he wearing any orange? And if he's lost, why doesn't he just ask for help? But the howl made me realize quickly that this was not a man. The next thing going through my head was, what the hell was that? That was no moose. It was definitely not a wolf or a bear. It was like nothing I have ever seen in 35 years of hunting. What it looked like to me was a gorilla or very close to one, but it walked upright, not on all fours. I stood there motionless for almost an hour and a half waiting to see if it would show itself again. During that time, I remembered a show I saw on Discovery Channel about a month before this trip about a man and his son that were hunting in British Columbia where they saw a very large animal throwing rocks at them. They took off and reported it to whomever and they later figured out it might have been a Bigfoot warning them to get out of this area. I then thought about the loud heavy thumping noise behind me and realized that maybe this creature was throwing something at me. After a while, it started to dawn on me that I may have just seen a Bigfoot and I started to get just a little scared. I normally leave the bush after dark when hunting, but this night I left about an hour prior to make sure I had lots of time. I was going to go back to the area the next day looking for the bull, but I couldn't bring myself to go anywhere near that spot. That's the first time in 35 years I have ever been afraid in a bush. Since then, I have wondered if this thing I saw is what scared the bull away. Like I said earlier, I have seen many moose in the bush and have never seen one run away from me like that. Interestingly though, from where the bull ran off and to where I saw this creature was only about 50 yards. Another thing, I don't know if this means anything or not, where I was sitting, I saw a large, probably moose leg bone laying on the ground about five feet from my ATV. It wasn't cut or sawed. It had been broken or snapped. It looked to be at least about a year old. And that, my friends, is the reason why I don't hunt. <laughs> no. Anyways, let's get to the last story of the day. All right, this next story is a little bit special to me since it comes from a subscriber. This sighting takes place in the Sioux Lookout, which is also located in the northern part of Ontario. It takes place in the summer of the mid-1980s. My grandparents, along with my grandmother's sister and her husband, would go to Ontario, Canada every year for a fishing vacation. The area in Ontario is about 200 miles north of International Falls, Minnesota. During these vacations, they would go park by the garbage dump at dusk and watch the bears come out. Sadly, the local bear population had been reduced to eating garbage due to the presence of humans. Being from the south side of Chicago, it was a fun and interesting sight for my grandma. One evening, my grandma and my Aunt Beth were parked on the rim of the dump and sitting in Beth's car looking down at the bears in the dump below. My grandma saw one, a bear, on his hind legs. It turned and made eye contact with her. To her dismay, she realized it was a Bigfoot. She said, he looked at me with such evil in his eyes. And scared, she yelled, Beth, start the car and let's get out of here. Beth, hearing the tone of my grandma's voice, did what she said without asking any questions until they were 
at a safe distance away. After they got out of there, Beth pulled over and my grandma told her what she saw. My grandma passed away in 1993. She was a wonderful person and had an open mind to what I now refer to as high strangeness. I think that's where I get my interest. I would like to thank Mahoney Rhodes for allowing me to share her grandmother's story on my channel. Although short, it was an enjoyable story to read, hearing how her grandmother pretty much got a shock of her life, seeing a Bigfoot rather than a bear. So thanks again, Mahoney Road. It's been a pleasure, and I think that's going to wrap it up for today. If you would like to share your encounter story in a safe environment, please forward your stories to ontariocryptids at gmail.com. By the way, your stories do not have to reside from Ontario and they can be as anonymous as you would like.